So this march is snaking its way through central London. To be honest, I wasn't expecting so many people because, uh, you know, there's a ceasefire yesterday. But there must be at least tens of thousands, if not more, people here marching through central London. What's your assessment of the recent conflict? Did the Palestinians win? Yeah, I think they, they certainly have uh, uh, demonstrated uh, the will to uh, dismantle the apartheid regime. They're quite prepared to do so. They are not prepared to wait anymore uh, for the UN, for the EU, for Washington, for any other. They've taken things into their own hands. And I think uh, we are into a new era in which freedom has become closer than ever. Do you think that the narrative has changed now? I mean, are the, are the Zionists on the back foot? Are people going to still be scared about being accused of anti-Semitism, that kind of stuff? I certainly don't think so. Anti-Semitism is not the issue. The issue is apartheid. The world has realized this. Even in Washington, in Congress, people are discussing apartheid in Israel today. The racism has gone beyond the limits and, and uh, it's no more uh, uh, bearable for the Palestinian people. So I think anti-Semitism is not something that is on the agenda today. The Palestinians in Sheikh Jarrah showed us and showed the entire world the ugly face, but the real face of occupation. The people of Al-Aqsa and Jerusalem showed us and the entire world the meaning of dignity and of honor. The people of Gaza, the people of Gaza showed us and showed the entire world the true meaning of resilience, courage and sacrifice. The second message is that whilst today we feel jubilant, we feel uplifted by what the Palestinians did and what they showed the world, this is not the time to stop. Let's, let's not be under any illusion. The occupation still stands. Gaza is still under siege and the Israeli state is continuing with its inhumane, brutal war crimes every single day. My dear brothers and sisters, we cannot rest and we mustn't rest because the Palestinians cannot rest. We mustn't, we mustn't let up because the Palestinians will not and cannot let up and we cannot stop because the Palestinians cannot stop. And the third and final message to Boris Johnson and his government and to virtually every single party that sits in Parliament. We must own up to our historical responsibility in funding this crisis, in the calamities that has befallen the Palestinian people and the entire Middle Eastern region as a result of what happened here more than a hundred years ago. We must stop our assistance and succor to the apartheid state of Israel. And last but not least, we saw what happened in Palestine. We saw who stood up for the brutality and crimes of the Israelis. It is churlish and immature of the British government to disengage and not talk to the real people on the ground who are leading the Palestinian people. Every single, every single Palestinian faction including the resistance, represents Palestine and the Palestinian struggle and they must re-enter into the political fold. Otherwise, we here in Britain, the British government and the entire world will be deemed absolutely irrelevant.
free, free. We welcome the ceasefire, but let us be clear. This will not stop the persecution, oppression, and injustice the Palestinians face on a daily basis. The, the oppression did not start just two weeks ago with attacks on worshippers at the Al Aqsa Mosque or even in the enforced evictions at Sheikh Jarrah. The persecution, oppression, and injustice that Palestinians face has been going on unopposed for decades at the hands of an Israeli government that places Palestinian children in military detention and puts Palestinians on unfair trials in military courts continues to impose a long, brutal siege of Gaza carries out indiscriminate attacks against something and they don't like hearing it every time they bomb Gaza every time they attack Jerusalem that is what creates anti-semitism stop it stop the occupation stop the bombings and the casual anti-semitism will soon disappear not since 1936 have we seen the divided and dispossessed Palestinians rise up with the unity they have shown in the last few weeks? This is not a new violence. The Palestinians have faced dispossession since 1917 and it began right here in London. And right now, we in London are saying we are not going to be silenced. Congratulations to you all for the defeat of the occupation forces from Gaza without achieving any of its goals, except, except for the destruction and killing of civilians and the demolition of homes and residential buildings, factories, health centers and even streets. I thank you all for your contribution in keeping the morale of our people in Palestine high as they continue to the As a Palestinian dear brothers, sisters, comrades, and as one of the organizers of this great demonstration, I sincerely thank you for your support. I also send my condolences to all those families who have lost loved ones in Gaza, all those parents who have lost their children. Let's make this absolutely clear. This was a war crime. This conflict was initiated by Netanyahu in order to preserve his power, but also to keep him out of prison. So let us all pledge, let us all pledge that one day Netanyahu will be in prison. It will not be for corruption, it will be for the war crimes perpetrated on the Palestinian people.